Okay, looking now at the product life cycle, a major element of marketing. So product life cycle, it's theory. So you don't walk into a marketing manager's office and say, show me the product life cycle. It's not going to be hanging in the wall. It's not going to be a diagram. Certainly it's used for strategic planning, but it's good for tactical planning. So works on the basis that every product has a limited life cycle and just like us, and we go through several stages. And each stage is different and with it brings problems, opportunities, and a different tactical response. So it helps for you to know what stage of the product life cycle your product is at. Now, when we're talking about PLC, it could be about a category. So it could be alcohol, it could be a form, clear spirits, a product, vodka, or even a specific brand. So you, when you're looking, which does it apply to? And if you think about the product life cycle for gin, gin has certainly was in decline, but now it's come back very strongly with a lot of new products all over the place. And this is the product life cycle here. Now, this diagram here you see in the left hand column is the sales and the profits, but we look at the sales in the right hand, the, the horizontal axis is the time aspect. So we'll get four stages, introduction, growth, maturity and decline. Some books will have early maturity, late maturity, it doesn't matter, it's a general principle. And we see here how sales start off low, they pick up in the introduction, they move into the growth stage, right? Then it goes, you, they increase here, and then they peak when they're in the maturity stage, <laughs> maturity stage even, and then decline. But look how profits mirror these, but the profits don't start really being made until you're in the growth stage, usually. You know, we can't say this happens with every product. And notice how they're all neatly divided up in times between the introduction and growth maturity. These will change as well. Now the flip side of the product life cycle is how consumers adopt these products. So if you look here, there's the adoption process. And again, I'm not sure of the source of this and how accurate these figures are, but I've certainly been around for years. Uh, it's called diffusion of innov innovation as well. So we have these two and a half percent of the population considered to be innovators. They'll buy, you know, they see something come out, they want to be the forefront, the first to have it. Then when they move on, you picked up by the early adopters who then see something, they see a trend, they see something that suits them, they hear about it. So they start getting it. And then you move into the early majority. So roughly, you know, 50% between the innovators, early adopters and early majority. The time scale between these can depend, right? It's just, a, as we said, it's just a theory that helps you to work on this. Then you move into the late majority, the people who start picking it up after, you know, once it's established, it's safe, it's common, and then towards the end, the laggard. So people buying it for the first time, and this could be years after the innovators first, you know, started using the product, but it's gone through many iterations since then. Now, the classic shape of the product life cycle, the, the one we saw earlier, introduction, maturity, uh, introduction, growth, maturity, decline, there are alternatives, right? So some, there's a traditional one there, some could be classic, right? A boom or classic, so it goes up there and it stays there. Sees a fad in, popular and then decreases. A lot of toys might end up like that. The extended fad lasts a bit longer. Um, and there's a seasonal, right? And look at it up and down, it depends on whether it may be happening. And you've got the revival and nostalgia and, you know, where it's, it's come back almost. Um, and the bust one obviously just didn't make it at all. And you think about fashions, well, I'm hoping these fashions come back in because I've got these trousers and the shirt waiting because it's definitely, it's a classic and it'll come back with a vengeance. Look at vinyl up here, record shops. You know, CDs started push. Uh, sorry, yeah, CDs started pushing up vinyl and cassettes, um, then streaming, and yet now more and more people are buying vinyl um, and paying higher prices than they did first time around. So there's one which has defied the product life cycle. It's came back. Is it a nostalgia, or is it here for good? Time will tell. But the main message here is don't get hung up in this classic shape. Product life cycles vary from industry to industry and brand to brand. Now, if we look at the introduction stage, just bring up a few of the words here so you can read them. Um, most products fail, they don't get out of the introduction stage. I think a general figure you might see is like 90% of new products fail in the consumer markets. 
um, because your sales are you're slow, your costs are high, and you might pull the plug on it. I think the Google Watch has been quite successful, but Google Glass hasn't. The example down here is, a, believe it or not, is a pillow, and the picture on it is, is that's a road to Auschwitz. And you have to wonder who on earth thought that would make a good product. Uh, linked to biggest props in history, flops in history even, is the Colgate ready-made meal. Yeah, the toothpaste people had ready-made meals here. So these, you see the strategies, how they, you know, it depends how much resources they put behind it. Um, in some kinds, they think, are we wasting money here or will we let the market decide? Now in the growth stage, so I've got examples here of um, mixed martial arts, which seems to be very popular. The, you know, that's been an upwards traje trajectory for the last number of years. Drones as well seem to be becoming very popular. The picture down here is actually eSports. There's a crowd here. They're not watching people playing sports. They're watching them play computer game sports, right? So again, this is a growth market that, out there. And I think the hoverboard in the bottom right there, you know, I think they are popular. Don't know how popular, but you see quite a few kids with them anyway. So when you're in the growth stage, you know, the, you've moved out the introduction, so you know, People are adopting it. So, you know, the product gets better. Um, you add new features, right? You know, um, new models, etc. maybe more expensive, maybe cheaper. Target new segments. So you're bringing in people. You start to, instead of just one product for everyone, you start to segment it. Could be in price. More people sell it. So the distribution channels increase. And instead of focusing on using the product, it's the brand, the particular brand you're building here. And you find price sensitive buyers. So this is how you maintain that upward growth because more people come into the market. Now, when you go into the maturity stage, this is where the vast majority of products are at consumer products because sales, sales stabilize. They don't stop. They just, if you sold half a million last year or the market, you sell half a million this year. Um, but there's over capacity, right? So there's a lot of producers and chasing fewer customers. Competition's intensified and it's about replacement sales. So when, you know, the washing machine, the kettle breaks, you know, you replace it. And that's why you might come up with a new design, a kettle. Or, you know, so you're always trying to keep that, com you know, comp competition's tough. So you try to get something that makes your product more distinctive from your rivals. It's more expensive promotion wise and they might then be private labels so you know you, you see asda microwaves right and that's because they're thinking yeah we can put our name in this and still make money so that's why it's less profitable now the, the growth stage was profitable because there was less of this but now you're having to find it's more competitive now Possible strategies here is, you know, try and get non-users into the product, new market segments, you know, and ultimately, if you're going to increase your sales, you've got to take them away from your customers um, or increase volume, get people to buy more, which is not uncommon now. Instead of, yeah, one garage, you need two garages, one car, you need two. So try to do this, improve the quality, improve the features. So the image, you know, you're an innovator, like Dyson with their would say hoovers but that's not quite correct <laughs> cleaners um so you you try to do something that catches the attention and people you know like it i think a few years ago apple their pcs were like colored and see-through and it well, energized them after being in the doldrums for most of the the night now what you've got here is physical obsolescence is when the product breaks down psychological obsolescence is when Use, the product still works, but you've changed, right? So the buyer, to, the owner wants to get something newer, better, and sooner than necessary. And like I mentioned before, you know, music, how it used to be a standard system, then the stacking system, some of you might remember, and I don't even know if people still have these these days because music's played in um, tablets, etc. So psychological, psychological obsolescence, you've changed. Now, you might hit the decline stage, and the decline stage is you can either you can either leave voluntary or just not put some resources behind the product and just let it dwindle here. 
or sell up to someone else. So, you know, you could restructure and change things here. If you look here, look, um, video recorders, I think they just stopped making them in the last few years or so. The iPod, I'm pretty sure that one, which was a exciting product maybe about 15 20 years ago now it's all changed coal fires does anyone still have a coal fire you know when it's all central heating these days and it's not you know environmentally friendly and video record you know the actual box set there of the godfather of course with the godfather godfather movie best movie of all time godfather 2 is good godfather 3 you don't talk about it um so there's selling off um and but the thing is why don't Firms drop products, well, maybe because they've got an emotional attachment to it. Maybe that was a product that made their name. So they keep it there, despite the fact it's in the decline stage, despite the fact it's a smaller base, it's emotional reasons. Or they might want to keep a wide product range, right? But eventually, ultimately, they'll say, we've got to get out of this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I forgot about this. Exit batteries may be an issue. Maybe you're tied into something. Maybe you're tied into producing it for someone else. Maybe there's pollution reasons why you can't get out of it. So there could be a, a, a something stopping you getting out. Maybe it's a you know a legal issue of some sort. So to sum up for the product life cycle, they're too varied to predict. You're buying into the general theory and you're thinking, okay. What stage are we at? How will this affect our tactics? How will it affect our strategy? You don't know. You don't walk in and say, hey, it's Tuesday. We've moved into the growth stage. Well done. You know, it's somewhere where you realise, actually, this is where we are now. Different firms, different strategies, different product life cycles. You could win in the industry, different brands and realise that we're talking about different things. So there's no rule about this. So if it's no use for that, why would you do it? Well, it it focuses on the future, right? You're thinking, where's the next stage? How will we react to this? Because you've got to change your marketing, you've got to plan resources. Um, and also when you're coming to the, moving to the end, you have to think about developing new products, right? Um, now, you, what the thing is, you don't wait till you're in the decline stage for this. As soon as you're in the introduction stage and you're moving out, you're looking at the next set there. You're always looking, so bigger firms, are looking where are we where are we going to be in you know ten years time. I think that's me. So thanks for listening.